Hey y'all, Coach of the Fight here, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about fire letters. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look down through the keys of Enoch for the times when it mentions the fire letters, starting here at key 110. We see it first mentioned in verse 2. It says, Enoch carefully instructed me to use the languages of Egyptian and Chinese to unify all the biochemical languages working horizontally in the body. At the same time, I was instructed to use Sanskrit and Tibetan fire letters to unify all the biochemical languages working vertically in the human body. Finally, I was instructed to use the Hebrew letter, fire letters, sacred energy sounds, and thought forms of light to connect with the energies of the intelligences of Kemo and Kizu unifying all crystalline languages of the third eye so as to open the template of the mind for the eternal light. All right, so now that's what this class is about. This is generally, I think, I believe is going to sum it up how these letters are used. Now, notice here that it's already telling us that these Hebrew letters particularly is the letters, the sounds, and the thought forms of light. So, so in somewhere there's the pictographs. And then also you see Kimmel and Kizu mentioned here. So there's a connection. All right, so let's go to the next one. This is gonna be verse five. And I'm not gonna always read the, uh, what key we're in. I would suggest you go over and get you a copy of this book from I think it's the Academy of Future Science or something like that. Um, but anyway, verse five says, these in turn are activated by the divine vector, Hebrew, created by the focused light force and by the imprinting of the divine fire letters of energy sounds upon the vertical and horizontal grid. So now, without, you know, getting too much into the other verses, what he's talking about is the sounds and how these sounds are working with us. Um, like I said, we're going to learn it's the sounds, it's the pictographs, and he even names three over there. Um, we'll see as we go on. Now... Um, this is why I'm not going to hit everyone because you go, okay, so we are in key 117 now. 69. You are to recognize that your mind forms the filament or the template membrane for the direct encoding of fire letters. The wisdom of light upon membrane circuits. For you are a biotransducer system for higher intelligence to indwell within you. They say, we must recognize, you ought to recognize, so we got, we got to get this, that our mind forms a filament. So our mind and a filament. Now, the other time I hear about a filament is in a light bulb. Our mind forms a filament or a template membrane for the direct encoding of the fire letters. So our, our mind is the, the filament in the bulb, then you just need some energy. You got to be enclosed or because if oxygen get to it, it'll burn up. But anyway, the wisdom of light upon your membrane circuits. Okay. The template membrane for the direct coding of the fire letters, the wisdom of light upon membrane circuits. So it's the fire letters that are the wisdom of light upon the membrane circuits. All right. Enough time on that one. Let's go to key 202 and let's look at 13. It says, however, Enoch made it very clear to me that in this divine creation, both the seed forms and the Deca Delta manifold come from a master template code composed of the Hebrew fire letters, which are used to shape the geometric relationship of the individual grids themselves and to fire them into unfoldment. So again, we're talking about these letters here. Now we learned in the pseudopographic that these letters were actually there in the creation of the earth. In other words, they were there before the earth was created. They were used to create the earth, in other words. 
Key 207 verse 15 says the five letter calligraphy of the language of light alters the memory substrate of language affecting the psychological, neurological, biochemical, and cosmological levels of thought attunement. Which would explain why they don't, why I shouldn't talk about them like this, but why it's important to return to this pure language. This is, this is why it's necessary, because this is what the pure language is doing. Simply the letters themselves. It's, this one is talking about the calligraphy. Now, from what I understand, that's just the artwork, the, the drawing of the letter itself, how it looks, what it looks like. It says the fire letter calligraphy of the language of light alters the memory substrate of language affecting the psychological. OK, so that's how we think neurological. That's how our body works. Biochemical. That's, that's, and that's how our body works and the cosmological. That's how the world works. That's how the universe works. So by having the absence of these letters, all of this is missing. Think about that. And by returning to the pure language, we get this atonement back. Therefore, we must see how the physical universe was shaped out of the divine fire letters. Accordingly, if the letters can still shape the light vibratory structure of your body on a small scale, you can imagine how the divine language can quicken your body of life to an even greater scale of creation where human language will be replaced by the language of light pictures. What? So returning to the pure language is what's going to actually help us to access the language of light, his language, him, and it's going to be replaced by pictographs. Let's read this slowly. This is coming from Key 207 also, 41. Therefore, we must see how the physical universe was shaped out of the divine, the divine fire letters. Like we said, it was there from the beginning. Um, it says the whole universe was created with these fire letters. So these, you can imagine these letters actually creating the universe. From what I understand, all they would have to do is just join up in certain letters, certain forms, certain, you know, just join together and make pairs and, you know, that's how you would have spoke this existence, you know, into a reality. Accordingly, if the letters can still shape the light vibratory structure of your body on a small scale. And that's what this chapter is going to be about. Let's go back and look at what the key says. The key to future linguistics are in the scriptures of light, which are the codes of the luminaries. In these scriptures, every letter causes illuminations of the divines to the springs forth. Every of the divine to spring forth and creates the passing of a universe within another universe's light and establishes in fields of consciousness death language alignments with the creative mind of the universe who in his goodness renews the creation every day continually and speaks through luminaries so you can imagine if this is still working on a uh, if well this is still working All right. So the human language will be replaced by the language of light pictures. All right, now we're going to jump up to 213. Key 213 verse 9 says, Instruction is given by the Heos Ha Kiedis, the Brotherhoods of Light, to activate sacred fire letters, coding those who are apportioned into color embodiment of vibration. The Brotherhood uses the sacred fire letters 1 1 to code a blue white embodiment, 1 a 0 to code a blue yellow embodiment, 1 ee to code a blue red embodiment, and e 1 1 to code a rose white embodiment. Okay. Yes, this is what we was talking about earlier. How I told you this book is higher than engineers. This is uh, smarter people than us. Let's 
We'll see if that one makes the video. Verse 10 says, the brotherhoods of light activate the sacred fire letters by projecting a burning yod from their channel of consciousness in the higher realms to a given human circulatory system. After the yod is projected, the geometries of the divine letters are brought forth to imprint new form at the nucleotide base. So the letter yod itself, yada, is saying is to me is like the first letter, not in the alphabet, but in the first letter in communicating with us is what it's saying here. And then once this yod is brought forth, then the other letters could come. You guys help me in the comment section. But to me, that makes sense why it is the form of this hand and why we see it in the Tetragrammaton, YHWH, Yad, He, Wahe, if I may. That would be why it's first. And what that's talking about is how you have this particular fire letter to be the first in, this, in the Tetragrammaton. And also in our Messiah's name. So I'm understanding that even his salvation is going to have to come through these letters and the understanding of these fire letters one way or the other. Through you or somebody close to you. Per or key 214. We're going to jump down to 38. It says, in previous cycles, man under the guidance of the Lords of Light interpreted the light pictographs into an alphabet of fire letters and mathematical geometries known as ideographs, which were also capable of respatializing any consciousness form that shared this original projection of light. Now, in a previous cycle, this is talking about before this race, before us, before humans. Now, were there other humans on the planet? If so, they probably didn't look like us because they would be of a different Adam and Cadman, a different, they would have had a different YHWH. They would have had a different creator because that creator would have moved on with them. Our creator is, is, is or should I say Enoch instead of creator because some people like big father in heaven is creator. We are an accuser Enoch. So you have to understand the multi-level universe and how each of us will be an Enoch and be our own creator. And when you do, everybody on that planet is going to look like you do at the time. You probably won't look like a human. But whatever it is that you look like at that form, you will create a, you, you, that universe will be created and the earth, so to speak, the planet you know, that sits in our position in that particular universe, all of the people on it will look like you will. Now, if you happen to have three eyes in that time world, it'll, everybody on the planet will have three eyes. And the thing about these multi-universes, it gets worse. You know, the previous universe is better than our universe, just like our universe is better than the next universe that will come after ours. So if you understand that, which we covered in the last video on the subject, you understand what he's saying here is that those before us, those that we call now Enoch and Michael and Gabriel and, and you know all of those angelic figures that's here to help us, they were the dwellers of the, the, the universe before, they were the failures, they were the wives, they didn't make it. That's why they got to help us. But those that were better than them, those that went on to the higher mansions and didn't, you know, didn't have to, you know, create another dirt world, they understood the fire letters on a different level than we do now is what it's saying. In the previous cycles, man understood the guidance of the Lord is of light interpreted by the light pictographs into the alphabet of the fire letters of mathematical and mathematical geometries known as ideographs. So in other words, they were seeing these pictures and shapes and understanding them, which would understand, which, you know, hmm, communication would be way different you could imagine if you if someone were to animate this, instead of notes coming out of the person's mouth, it would actually be the pictographs of the fire letters coming out of the mouth and imprinted on the person's soul somehow. 
or, and not necessarily out of their mouth, but emanating from Kiz Moen Kizu is where they're actually coming from. I mean, I can't spit a pictograph at you. I can show you one, but. Kimmel and Kizzle, they're emanating these fire letters onto our brain, which, like I said in the first one, is a computer. Our brain is a computer, and just like any computer needs input, well, the fire letters are that input. And what this verse is saying is those before us, in the previous mansion before us, saw letters as we hear words or read words. All right, next one is key 15, where we see the fire letter actually included in the key. It says, the key to sciences of the past are given in the desert. Wherever Melchizedek has reigned, there will be found the round numbers of how the chiliacosm is extended to the chasm of the arcs. The keys to sciences of the past are given in the mountains. Wherever Melchizedek has reigned, there will be found the fire letters of how the chasm of the ark are extended to the Tilia chasm. Okay, I'm about to take his word for it now. Let's jump down to verse four, though. The fire letters of Hebrew and Tibetan scriptures revealed in the mountains give a cosmology of light, which shows by means of universal models, the worlds to which the people of God will be taken after they have fulfilled their destiny on earth. Hence, these fire letters are the unique angles of Lee letter grid transformation between the geometric span of the earth and the heavens where both human and heavenly beings share the same cosmological signature wow the letters are the connection the letters are the connection with the angels and if and so once we restore these letters especially in the children then humanity will once again be able to rebuild itself. Or I shouldn't say rebuild itself. We can't. Else we'd have did it already. But the Elohim will then be able to rebuild us. And that's important to understand that without these fire letters, one can argue that they can't. They can't do this work. Else we would have to redo our father's plan, go all the way back to the creation of the universe, add some additional letters and say, hey, use these instead. Hence, these fire letters are the unique angles of letter grid transformation between the geometric span of the earth and the heavens. Where both human and heavenly beings share the same cosmological signature. So, by taking these letters away or changing them, we have severed this connection. Restoring these letters must restore this connection. I mean, a simple law of assumption. These cosmologists marked in stone and written on paper show that there existed a direct interconnection with the higher heavens. These codes indicate a greater cosmology that we will once again understand by associating the crosses of the ancient astrophysical temples throughout Mesoamerica with the crossbar region of the sky portrayed in stone and written in the fire letters of the ancient scriptures. Let's go back to it later. The key speaks of where a transplanting has happened before in the deserts and in the mountains. This transplanting is indicated in the ancient cosmologies that speak of the image of the horizontal space, the earth plane, that runs through the blue dome of the heavens. 
These cosmologies, marked in stone and written on paper, show that there existed a direct interconnection with the higher heavens. These codes indicate a greater cosmology that we still once again understand by associating the crosses of the ancient astrophysical templates throughout the Mesopotamia with the crossbar regions of the sky portrayed in stone and written in the fire letters of the ancient temple scriptures all right y'all if you understand it put a comment below let's go on we're going down to verse 62 in the same context the fire letters explain the programs and the arcs of intersection between the levels of heavens composing the chiliarchism and the planetary earth worlds all right i'm gonna call that straight too it's a foul ball or something let's go to the next one enoch showed me that just as Hebrew fire letters are used to connect the earth to the heavens, so also the Tibetan fire script is used to build consciousness thresholds between the heavens and the earth. Hmm. Then that's something that I can understand. So now it's bringing in Tibetan fire letters. Of course, you know, the study started off as Hebrew fire letters, but to, now we, we can't ignore the Tibetan because it's talking about the Tibetan as used to build consciousness thresholds between the heavens and the earth. This is number 20 out of 26. Let's go back to the other one. And they talked about heavens and the earth. It says, the fire letters of the Hebrew and Tibetan scripture revealed in the mountains give a cosmology of light which shows by means of universal models, the worlds to which the people of God will be taken after they have fulfilled their destiny on earth. Hence, these fire letters are the unique angles of letter gear transformation between the geometric span of the earth and the heavens where both human and heavenly beings share the same cosmological centers. The, the Hebrew is like a bridge. And then across the bridge comes Tibetan. All right, so unless I miss something, he's saying that the Tibetan is used to build the consciousness, but we're not sure what the Hebrew does yet. Let's go on. Oh, wait. Maybe we need to do a class about this heaven and the earth. Um, if we don't find out about the Chinese and the Sanskrit. Then down in key 305, we see verse 22 says, fire letters, the sound seed forms will total 23 to the third. <laughs> you know, oh. I was actually just thinking on that. Oh, wow. See, every time I start this class, I get sidetracked. Look at the key 305. It says, the key to future luminaries are the glories of the throne of the creative mind, which has a measure for all measures. Call dice. Kodaish, Kodaish, Adonai, Tezebeot, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. You know, I can't say I understand this, but it brings to mind something that I'm thinking about as far as the letters are concerned. In our alphabet, in our Aleph Bayetha, each letter has a name, a very specific name with very specific letters. Like Yada is two letters and Hawa'a for that makes the Ha sound actually has three letters. Ha, Wa, A. And so when you think of that letter, like for instance, if you take the Messiah's name, Yahweh Shawana. And then you were to break it down, that's Yada. Hawa'a. -ha. 
Wawa, Shana, Wawa, Ayana, Nuana. And so simply by looking at the names of his letter, you can expound on what his name truly means. And then, like it's saying here, I believe what it what this is saying is that you could keep doing it until infinity. And it makes sense, these being five letters. Of course, you couldn't do this with the alphabet. You're just going to get some weird repeating nonsense. But with the five letters, you would only then have to parse it out. Staying in key 305, verse 50 says, let us sing the kata ianaya, the eye writings of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriah, so as to open the eyes of all man could of all mankind to the sympathy of light, to the sympathy of light. Let the fire letters dawn upon the eyes as we sing the inevitable, <laughs> as we sing the inevitable chords of worship to the all pure light of the Father's I am so. The sound powers have correspondences in all the spheres of manifestation. Come, be crowned with the eternal flame of. Yahweh upon the head. Come. And yeah, so this could very well be what it's meaning, you know, when it says, you know, that we'll have his mark on our foreheads. It could very well have something to do with the pictographs in our heads or in our minds. Now, I'll have to look up that word, the Ketav Ianayim. But it says here is the eye writings of Michael. Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel. And I can imagine the other three as well have eye writings. So as to open the eyes of mankind to the sympathy of light. So it is these fire letters that must dawn. Humanity has to learn these fire letters in order to make the transition. To some extent, I mean, you know, learning is a process. But from what I understand, what's important is the sounds, the pictographs. Now we're going to jump down to key 307. Verse 17 says, and I saw with my own eyes the meaning of John's words. A scroll written within and on the reverse side. My eyes saw how the scroll consisted of fire letter emanations and how it was necessary to enter within these emanations to know the meanings of both sides of the scroll. Now, I tried to imagine this one time. I actually tried to make something that was like this where you have it drawn on both sides. But what I believe it's really only talking about is reversing the order of the letters. When you read it one way, and then when you turn around and read it another way, you may get a whole different understanding of what's being said there. And only the scripture could do that. Like I said, if you tried that with some English, you'd be interested in what you would actually get. But I can imagine, well, you're definitely going to get something using the Hebrew. I mean, just, just parsing out letters. You, you, There was no spaces. There was only 22 letters. And... You parsed them out. When you came up with what you thought was a word, you put a space there. And you kept going until it made sense. That's what they mean by fire letters. And then you think about it by taking the fire letters away. Now we need interpreters. People can tell us what it means. All right, looks like we're going all the way down to the index. <clears throat> flame, 
Flame scripture fire letters. Now we probably could have read this first as like a definition. It says the language of fire or flame geometries, which can pierce the three veils of conventional relativity and open the mind of man to behold wondrous things of divine wisdom. The fire letters can code consciousness into light. The flame, the flame scripture encompasses the secret mysteries out of which the Torah or was defined for Adamic humanity. Specific letters of a sacred language shaped in fire script so that the consciousness of the sacred letters of scriptural writings can actually penetrate the soul of the reader so that the soul of the reader comes to behold the deity. In other words, by taking these letters away from you, they took your God away and redefined them in their own letters, in their own language. The whole world is built on these fire letters. That's why you see a difference in the pictographs from a pre-Babylonian era to a post-Babylonian era. They're already taking the sounds away and the letters away. That's why Joshua's name looks different. Oh, that's, that's why the name Joshua would look different pre-exilic and post-exilic. Let me read. Let me read that again. <laughs> it says, these are the flame scripture fire letters. It said, these are the language of fire or flame geometries which can pierce the three veils of conventional relativity and open the eyes of man to behold wondrous things of divine wisdom. See, this happens while we're asleep now. The fire letters can code human consciousness into light. So by keeping the fire letters away, they keep you out of human consciousness. The flame scripture encompasses the secret mysteries out of which the Torah or was defined for Adamic humanity. See, the Torah or is all of scripture. That's everything. You got the Torah and then you got the Torah or, which is everything else. All of it. Lottie dotty, every jot and tittle. And everything he meant to say included all of the stuff that ain't even written as everything. So with the fire letters, you don't even need all the scripture. Without the fire letters, you need a library of of and a lot and, and imagine that so you need a library of alphabet letters to understand what the fire letters was trying to teach you or trying to teach us. The flame scriptures encompasses the secret mysteries out of which the Torah or was defined for Adamic humanity. Encompasses the secret mysteries out of which the Torah or was defined. And I don't heard just like you can imagine, you can be really easy to understand when I say it. Thinking about it is kind of tough. But the Bible couldn't have been written without these letters. Without these letters, you wouldn't even have the Bible. The whole the word wouldn't even exist. We're like, wait a minute, John chapter one, verse one. Hey, he said it, not me. Make it make sense. The specific letters of a sacred language shaped in fire script so that the consciousness of the sacred letters of the scriptural writings can actually penetrate the soul of the reader so that the soul of the reader comes to behold the deity. Now, at one point, I was reading the in Hebrew, maybe for about a week, the Bible and the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew once a day. It says, these scenario abstracts were projected in glowing geometries of light, which are part of the fire letters used to scram, used to 
transcribe the knowledge from Father Universe to Son Universe to Shekinah Universe and connecting one entity of time with another entity of time. So yeah, we we gotta we gotta um, grasp on that. Um, then it also says the keys are encoded in fire letters, having the sacred yard over each letter so that a new spectrum of light can biochemically respatialize you with the activating by activating the chemistry in your mind to participate on the many planes of the word of God. Now, the reason why I didn't cover this verse at the beginning was because it didn't really make sense to me what it was saying, this sacred yod. I couldn't understand why the 10th letter would be sacred at the, you know, that is at the beginning of the Tetragrammaton. But now we know that this is the letter, like the hand itself is actually coming forth first to bring us the rest of them. And so what he's talking about here is how each of these keys has it around them. Let me show you what I mean. Like you have the key there and you see that letter, um, the modern Hebrew letter there, Yad, all around it. So if this is true, if there's significance to this, then having this letter in its proper pictograph form would actually be significant. We said we was going to come back to the first verse we did look at. He says, finally, I was told, I was instructed to use the Hebrew fire letters, sacred energy sounds, and thought forms of light to connect with the intelligence of the Kimmelian Kism. So, we understand that one of these is going to be the pictographs, but is it the fire letters or is it the thought forms? Thought forms. What is a thought form? Thought form, spiritualism in parentheses, a manifestation of a manifestation of thoughts, ideas, and emotions of someone. It is believed to be able to be sensed by people and take physical form within the spirit world. Two people can have the same idea at the same time because they felt the same thought forms. What? So thought form is spiritualism. So when people have a similar emanation, like we was on the channel the other day live talking about the restrainer and how we were getting an understanding of the restrainer and its purpose. And someone in the comment section immediately said, well, they came down and, and emphatically said, you know, I got that same emanation last night after fasting and I thought about it while well, I had fasted too and so that we were under the similar thought form it says a manifestation of thoughts ideas and emotions of someone this and the someone in our in this case would be our father in heaven it says it is believed to be able to be sensed by people and take physical form within a spirit world within the spirit world that would be spiritual Israel Two people can have the same idea at the same time because they felt the same thought forms. So what we understand is that these pictographs are what are doing it. The pictographs are used to send thought forms. So I was instructed to use the Hebrew fire letters, sacred energy sounds, and thought forms. So the letters are the pictographs. The sounds they make are the important things, the letters and the sounds, because the letters on the sounds are the codes that are being put on our souls to make these thought forms. The thought forms are being created from 
the letters. It's really, when you say it out loud, it makes sense. The thoughts are being created by the words, which are being created by the letters. So we have to have the sounds and the letters. Once we have those, like we learned in the other class, while we're asleep, he can emanate, you know, onto into our dreams, onto our conscious, the thought forms. And then we can connect with the intelligences of Kemo and Kizu, the cosmologies. So by taking the letters away, these people done trapped us down here. Mentally, physically, every kind of a Kali you can almost think about. All right, y'all. And that is a lot to think about. So we're going to go do this that. If you got anything out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And shout out.